Hey guys, Captain Walnut here again with another tutorial, or I guess not really tutorial, but an explanation. It's come to my attention that a lot of you out there don't know how to make a fully automatic melon and pumpkin farm. Uh, and I don't mean like you have to come back in and retill the soil. I mean that you, after you build this thing, you never have to touch it again. It'll continuously deliver melons and pumpkins to you. Um, it's, uh, to my knowledge, it's the only food source that doesn't require any user interaction whatsoever. So, you know, I'm just going to jump right into the explanation here. So the entire thing centers around the bud switch. I know most of you know that, but just in case some of you don't, um, when it's powered on in a diagonal direction, the block won't update uh, immediately unless a block next to it updates. So bud switch block update detector switch. Um, as long as that remains on, it won't close. If you turn it back off, it won't close immediately until a block update occurs. Um, we can use this to um, use this plus an exploit in Java to uh, the way Java processes things directionally to prevent things from becoming untilled. So you notice that this is powered right now. If we unpower it so that this thing retracts, boom, you saw that it went down before that soil be could become untilled. So in Minecraft's eye, this went down before I actually placed that, which is pretty cool. It does not work, however, um, if you try this the other direction. Um, so I just put it back up there. If if I had a bud switch that was extending, uh, that takes one tick to occur. But if you have a bud switch that retracts, that occurs in zero ticks. So it all happens before you actually place the block. Oop, and of course I had it still on. There, now it's off. Boom. Don't tell me the sun's setting. It is. All right. Uh, actually, let me just keep going for a little while. If you um, have, th now this depends entirely on direction. Actually, it's nice that the sun's setting because the piston either has to be on the side that the sun sets or the sun rises. From The bud switch has to be from where it's, this is occurring. So you see, this is the sunset side. This is the sun rise side. So the melon would grow right here or right here, melon or pumpkin. If you had it facing the other direction, um, so let me till that, bring it up. If you had it facing the other direction, so the pumpkin's not on this side of the piston, but it's rather on the east-west side, you see that it goes untilled. And now I'm going to sleep, make a cut, and come back. See you in a second. So we can use these tricks to, uh, to make a fully automatic farm. Now here we have a fully automatic farm. Um, the, this is that bud switch that I just showed you here. This would be a piston that pulls it, that pushes a pumpkin or melon out. And this is a, the retraction to prevent the soil from becoming untilled. So you see, there it goes. And then it's ready for harvesting again. Of course, this was a pumpkin or melon. It would be deconstructed into an item rather than remaining a full block. So you would have a water stream or something right here and that would fall down. And I will show you how to do all this stuff in a second. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to build this because I'm going to put the world up for download. And also, I believe that you guys should do some experimentation on this. This is just the very first design I came up with as soon as I discovered this trick. And I know some other people have discovered it as well. But this is just the first design I came up with, and I'm sure it could be optimized. But, you know, this is what I did. So um, here we have... The two things you must remember are the bud switch has to happen on the retraction, has to be there north or south of the melon block, aka sunset side or sunrise side of the melon block, and the pull down piston must uh, get pulled down without any delay happening in between. So you see it's powered right now because there's a torch beneath this orange block that the bud switch would retract. As soon as that retracts, this line becomes unpowered and there's no repeaters or torches in between, so there's no delay. If there was a delay, it would get untilled. Now I know in the newest snapshot, you don't have to worry about things becoming untilled because pumpkins and melons will still grow there, but there's a rumor going around that that's gonna be taken out. I'm not sure if that rumor is true, but just in case it is, I still feel like talking about that. And I am gonna talk about the untilled farms in a second. Um, yeah, so then we can take that power, just send it up to the corner. So you see right here, I'm powering this bud switch from a diagonal direction. So it's on when the bud switch needs to be pushed out and it's off when I want it to be able to retract. So that's how you just set up your logic 
And then we can also, this repeater powers this, so it makes sure that it extends back out again instead of just remaining in one position. So, actually that's really hard to do from this angle. Let me do it from right here if I can. Yep, okay, here we go. There you go. So again, I'll have this roll up for download if you need to get, look at this thing a little bit more. And then finally, this has this has to happen one tick after this piston must extend one tick after this piston retracts, so that conveniently we have that right here. There's a one tick delay in between because of this torch. Now, just an experiment. I know this is a redstone mess right here, but pistons. Oh look, it just fired. There's a pumpkin waiting for us. Um, is there any melons here? This is a melon one. This, uh, I know this is a redstone mess, but I just literally just built this just to see if I could do it. If for some reason, rather than pushing, pushing the pumpkins and the melons outwards, you wanted to push them straight down, you can do that because pistons count as a transparent block, so pumpkins and melons will grow here. All you have to do is just make sure, again, that this is a retraction, that the bud switch is a retraction block, that there's no signal delay in between the until preventer piston, I guess you could call it and that this occurs one second, one tick or so after this one. So if I place it, you see that it gets, it stays untilled, or it stays tilled. Now why do I have the wheat here? Um, some tests, uh, I, I've done some tests, it's inconclusive, but it seems to me that if you have more farmland around a pumpkin or melon stalk, it tends to grow faster. So it is helpful to put wheat next to it. Um, I, it's, 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 you know, it's no big deal to do it and it seems like it helps. Maybe I'm just tricking myself into thinking that it does that, but hey. Um, and another note here, you do need water. I have the water right here, but note that the water tries to flow a little bit. Now, if you this is dangerous, you might want to move your water, like say back to here, because if you log out, there is a very remote chance that this repeater will get stuck. I know that they fixed it, but there's still a very, 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 very slim chance that it will happen. And then if that happens, the water will flood out here and, you know, it could potentially until your soil. Um, okay. So like I said, that those are for the farms for uh, if you're running 1.0 and you need your soil to remain tilled. If you don't want to worry about your soil remaining untilled, then you can move your bud switch above it and make a far more compact farm. Um, so here you go, a pumpkin or melon would just grow right here and it would get pushed out immediately. Uh, with this one, uh, it doesn't matter if it's retracting or pushing because we don't care about how many ticks it takes, we just care that it updates. So as soon there's our both bud switches right here, both of these pistons. As soon as this one extends, um, this one will extend, and then this redstone up here will cause this one to retract, causing this one to retract. So they're mutually updating each other. Um, so if I put in, you'll see, I was oh, actually pointing at the screen, you'll see if this block gets pushed out, that turns on, which turns this torch off, which turns this line off, which would allow this piston to then retract. There we go. And then so you can just set those guys right up next to each other and have a fairly compact farm. Then you'd have a water stream flowing right along this part here to take your items away. And you saw that that's a butt switch. Um, now we can apply this same exact concept to a cobblestone generator. And let me get some lava and a button. Actually, let me get some iron too. Since I built it out of non-burnable blocks. I figured, hey, why not just use the most expensive blocks in the game? <laughs> Obviously, if you were actually building this in the real game, you wouldn't do that. Lava right there. It flows down into where the pumpkin and melon would normally grow. And then when the cobble is cr created, it updates. So this is a clockless, fully automatic cobblestone generator. Now, of course, um, it's built the exact same way as that one was. There's nothing special here except for, you know, the little holding blocks for the lava and the water. Just got to make sure the lava lands here then flows outward to touch the water. So the lava hits a block, flows outward to touch the water, and turns into cobblestone. And, of course, when you're placing it, when the water flows past and when the lava flows past the bud switch, it will cause it to update, but that's not a big deal. Now, notice... The only problem with this is when you break blocks out here, if you've let it fully extend, then it won't update itself. 
Um, there are two ways to fix that. You could have just a button. So let me wait. For, I shouldn't have let it go all the way out. Let me just extend this out. Okay, so it can't go anymore. Now if I push a button, it'll cause a redstone update, which will just remind this thing that it can go again. The other thing you can do is... Simply have another redstone update here, and I'll get out a switch. So we could run redstone all the way back. And then, ah, if I could just place the redstone. So this is close enough to that that it'll cause a redstone update, I think. Maybe it needs to be one higher. I'll make it one higher just to be safe. There we go. I don't want to make a liar out of myself. So we'll turn this on. And if I delete this block, it causes a redstone update. See that it extends. Now if I delete it too quickly because you saw how slow that thing actually worked, you're not going to get it to happen again. So all you need to do is just have the same thing here. Because since this is slightly closer, the power, as soon as this one is connected, it'll connect right here. The power reaching the end of this is slightly stronger, so it'll cause another redstone update. So it's a pretty safe bet that if you're mining all the way out here, um, if you can't get this one to work, you'll get this one to work. There you go. Um, now, this is the... Uh, this is a big version. This is a, of the fully automatic melon farm that I actually have in one of my worlds. I just used MC Edit to drop it right in here. Um, it uses the tilled soil method, not the untilled soil method. There's an untilled farm. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, two things about the water stream down here. Um, you need to have, when you're placing these things, you need to make sure that these are block apart from each other. The These lines that are diagonal from the reds from the pistons because um, if they're next to each other then obviously the redstone will connect and it won't work anymore the other thing um, you need to do is if you have the water up too high then the water could flow in and until your soil if you have it down one more then the currents over here could push your melons into your piston or um, well actually that's it so I just have it down by two Last thing is up here, I'm using iron bars at the higher level so that when the melons get crushed, they hit the iron bars and fall straight down instead of, you know, getting scattered everywhere and landing on your blocks and stuff. And also that's what this glass column's for, for just a guidance for that. Um, again, world download will be available so you can look at it. And then lastly, just the highly compact, um, let me get out a melon. There's a melon. Highly compact farm for untilled situations. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. World download will be available in the description. All right, bye-bye.